Hi and welcome to another episode. Still got the Sinclair Spectrum next. Good old Nexty. I know I've been saying that for a fair few episodes now. Been knocking them out once a day. But let's have a look at the browser. So we go on in. And I've copied some files across to my SD card. This will not be on yours unless you've randomly done the same thing. But let's go into demos and into triple A. Now, as we know, when we highlight things, if it turns a cyan color, we can load it. Sadly, these .trd files, we can't. And that's because they're tr-dos files. That's because they're tr-dos files and it's not currently supported by the Spectrum Next browser. I'm not saying it won't be supported in the future, especially if you've got like a um, accelerator card, you know, the, the Raspberry Pi in there. Maybe that'll get added at some point, but at the moment it's not there. So we need another way of doing this. And one way is if we press and hold the reset button and then it restarts and then we can press spacebar and then we can highlight not to boot into the Spectrum next, but to boot into what would be a stock uh, spectrum. So for example, let's select the plus two. So we press enter on there and wait for it to boot back up again. And that's it. It's just like we've got a Spectrum Plus 2 in front of us, but there's nothing extra here right now. We need an extra device stuck on the back as it were. Now, what you can get your hands on is a Div MMC, which fits in the back. And lots of people use that on their stock Spectrums, but what we can do is be cheeky and use the ROMs for that here in the Spectrum Next. So I'm gonna show you how to get that across. First, we need to turn off and get the SD card. Okay, so we've got the SD card waiting in the PC. Let's go to this website for the Div MMC stuff. We need esxdos.org. And as we can see, it does run .trd files. So let's get hold of that. Nicely downloaded, unpack it. Let's move this across, bring the file manager back up again. I need to copy across these three folders. And as that copies across, we go into machines next, and then we copy in the esxmc.bin. Now in the manual, if you've got an RTC installed, it tells you to copy across a sys file and everything, don't bother to do that. It doesn't need to be done because if anything, if you do, it will crash things out. So just ignore that part of the manual. All we need to do is edit this config file and I like to use notepad++. So I'm gonna bring that up. And as you can see, I've already edited it before, but basically you load it up and it goes across here. Now in the manual as well, it tells you to basically append um, the 128K version of it. What I like to do is highlight it, copy it, and then make a new line, and then paste that in. And then we need to do is edit it so that we know it's different from the other one. So, and just for being pedantic, that should be a capital K. And what we need here is something that makes it stand out from the other one. So I'm gonna put in div mmc, and then at the end here, we need to do comma esx mmc dot bin, comma less than sign non greater than sign. And that's what we need. So. I'll leave that there for just for a second so you've got a good time to pause it so you can see what we need to do. And then we save that, of course. And that's us done. Let's take, close everything down and inject the SD card properly and go across back to the next D. Okay, I've put the SD card in. I've already booted back up to the Spectrum next. So let's press the reset button, hold it down for a little bit, let go, it boot. It resets, press the space bar so we can go into the menu. 
And then what we want to do is just have a quick look at what the 128K one would normally look like, just in case you've forgotten. I bet you haven't, but just in case you have. Or maybe didn't even know if you're coming from like Commodore or something like that. And this is what it would normally look like. So if you want a normal 128K mode, this is what you want. But let's press and hold the reset button again. Let go, press the space bar. And then let's go down and make sure that the wonderful new settings that we've done actually works. So we're highlighting the div MMC, press enter, and it reboots again. All the fun of waiting. And this time though, the ESX DOS is actually booted. You can see that everything's worked, but then it's reset into what looks like a 48K mode. Now don't worry because this is a special poke or something for the 48K that you've still got access to the 128K and all the fun of having a 128K uh, machine. So don't worry about that. But then you press the green button or the drive button on the left hand side. In the manual it says it's yellow, it's not, it's green. We press that and then we can go down. Now I really should have uh, streamlined the SD card like I did in the last video, but I haven't. So let's go down to demos and then all the way down to AAA. And then we can see that there's these TDR files. Now let's press enter. And as we can see, they've loaded, which is really good. I have no, this is just a file manager type thing. I don't really know how to use it or anything. So we'll just, Oh, I went and pressed the reset button. I didn't need to do that. What we could have done is just press the drive button. So just to prove a point, I'll load that thing back up again. So I'll just press the drive button and then we go down to the second one. And there's a nice little animation of a hockey puck. Press the drive button again. Go down to the third one. What have we got? Oh, Space Invaders. Just a flashing demo type thing, but it's clever that it does that. Press drive again. I want the fourth one. I have no idea what that is, max boot. Maybe someone can tell me what that is. And then drive button again, and then down to the bottom. We've got the file manager thing yet again. So I'll just reset this while we're waiting, but as you can see, that works perfectly. And then what we need to do is press the reset button and I'll go back up, press the space bar, go all the way back up to the next, press enter, and then we've got all the fun and games of using the fun stuff of the Spectrum Next. So I really hope this has helped people, especially since that page 240 in the manual is a bit confusing in what it's saying. You do not copy the RTC file across if you've got a real-time clock in here. You do not need to do that, so don't do that. And it's the green button, not the yellow button. So as always, happy gaming.